Throughout history, the F-16 has proven to be an exceptional aircraft, consistently evolving to meet the ever-changing demands of modern combat. From its inception, this fighter jet has pushed the boundaries of what's possible in aerial warfare. This machine that's already a force to be reckoned with continues getting equipped with cutting-edge technology, rendering it even more formidable. Now there has been an announcement that Ukraine will be adopting these upgraded F-16S into its arsenal, and it has sent ripples of concern through Russia. Russia's response to the F-16's evolution has faced significant challenges. The gap between these upgraded aircraft and Russia's fighter jets raises questions about their ability to keep up on the battlefield. Join us as we explore the implication of these new upgraded F-16S shocking Russia and other countries already using them. The F-16 Fighting Falcon stands as one of the most versatile aircraft within the U.S. Air Force's inventory. It has consistently served as the cornerstone of the Air Force's aerial combat fleet, boasting a fleet of over 4,000 units. This platform has been ingeniously adapted to fulfill a diverse array of missions, encompassing air-to-air -air combat, ground assault, and electronic warfare. In the domain of aerial combat, the F-16 excels due to its exceptional maneuverability and extended combat radius, surpassing that of any potential adversary fighter aircraft. This capability enables it to effectively identify targets under various weather conditions and detect low-flying aircraft amidst radar ground interference. The innovation of this aircraft goes as far back as the early 1970s, when the U.S. Air Force needed a new fighter jet that could tackle various challenges head-on. They needed a plane that could dominate in aerial combat, one that could outmaneuver and outperform its adversaries. Then, they wanted a jet that could double as a ground attacker, delivering accurate strikes with a potent payload while defending itself against enemy aircraft. The F-16 was designed to meet all these challenges head-on, and it was first flown officially in 1978. Its agility made it a top performer in dogfights, and it was armed to the teeth for ground attacks, boasting remarkable precision. On top of that, it featured technology to spot and counter enemy planes, and could handle any weather that came its way. Now this lethal fighter jet was added to the Ukrainian armament during the recent war that's ongoing between Russia and Ukraine. When Russia launched 18 missiles from the air, land, and sea right into Ukraine, making the country's eighth attack on Ukraine in just one month, the other players stepped up their game, too. The UK, Netherlands, France, Belgium, Denmark, Poland, and the USA decided to arm Ukraine with F-16S, and things have gotten heated up since then. Since the first F-16 was flown in 1978, the fighter jet already has a remarkable 44-year service history with its production still in full swing. While its extensive experience highlights its combat significance, it's worth noting that the F-16 is 35 years older than the potential opponent, Russia's Su-35, that it might encounter in Ukraine. However, it has been consistently upgraded to remain contemporary, resulting in numerous variants, and Russia is not ready for its impact. This aircraft, along with the F-15 Eagle, made history by becoming the world's first aircraft capable of enduring higher gravitational forces than their pilots. Lockheed Martin has even supplied these fighter jets to various countries, including Bahrain, Greece, Iraq, Israel, Denmark, and Poland, among others. Notably, an agreement was also signed between the Aerospace Industrial Development Corporation and Lockheed Martin to establish an F-16 fighter jet maintenance center in Taiwan in December 2019. With an impressive track record, the F-16 has completed over 13 million sorties and approximately 19.5 million flight hours as of August 2021. The latest production configuration has garnered orders from five countries. The cockpit of the F-16 features advanced equipment, such as Honeywell color flat panel, liquid crystal multifunction displays, a digital terrain system, a modular mission computer, a color video camera for recording the pilot's view of the head-up display, and more. The F-16's armament is noteworthy as well, with nine hardpoints for various weapons payloads. It can carry a range of missiles, including the Lockheed Martin or Raytheon AIM-9 Sidewinder, Raytheon AMRAM, Raytheon Sparrow, and more. 
The aircraft also boasts air-to-surface missile capabilities and can carry advanced weapons like the AGM-84E standoff land attack missile and AGM-142 Popeye II. The F-16 can carry various other air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles, rockets, targeting pods, and conventional or nuclear bombs across its 11 hardpoints, boasting a total capacity of 17,000 pounds of ordnance. Navigation and targeting are enhanced by systems like the Lockheed Martin Lantern Infrared Navigation and Targeting System and the Boeing Joint Helmet Mounted Queuing System, which equips the pilot with visor-projected symbology and optical inertial tracker technology. Regarding its propulsion, the F-16 is powered by a single engine, but there's a twist. The fighter has two engine suppliers, Pratt and Whitney, which provides the F-100 PW-200 afterburner turbofan with 29,160 pounds of thrust and General Electric, which offers the F-110 GE-100 turbofan with 29,588 pounds of thrust. This power propels the F-16 to a top speed of approximately Mach 2.05, a maximum range of 2,620 miles and an impressive flight ceiling of 58,000 feet. Moving on to design features, the F-16 was a trailblazer in adopting a fly-by-wire flight control system, enhancing its agility. It was purpose-built to withstand 9G forces during high-angle maneuvers, allowing pilots to push their acrobatic skills to the limit. Other innovations include a frameless bubble canopy for improved visibility, a side-mounted control stick, and a reclined seat to mitigate G-force effects on the pilot. Additionally, the F-16 has proven countermeasures and self-protection systems. It's equipped with radar warning receivers, jammers, and chaff and infrared flare dispenser systems. The radar systems on board, such as the Northrop Grumman APG-68 radar, offer an array of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground modes, making the F-16 a versatile aircraft for a wide range of missions. Its Link-16 data link also ensures seamless communication with friendly forces. There are even more features like the Global Positioning System, Inertial Navigation, and Radar Altimeters. Another interesting upgrade is the F-16's futuristic side, which is the Shield Laser Weapon. This is still under development by Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and Lockheed Martin. While Lockheed Martin is responsible for the main laser called LANCE, the aircraft that will wield it hasn't been officially announced yet. Now, it's apparent that Ukraine is getting a major upgrade with the F-16. The fighter jets are en route to deal with high-threat Russian forces. The only challenge will be training Ukrainian pilots in a shorter time frame than usual, possibly as little as four months, due to the urgency of the situation. The F-16's continuous upgrades and improvements reflect its enduring legacy as a highly capable and adaptable fighter jet. Comparing its features to Russia's Su-35, we can already see reasons why the Russian fighter jet can't face it and win. The Su-35 is a quite powerful jet in itself, but it doesn't compare to the upgraded version of the F-16, which has turned it into a feared ammunition. The Su-35 fighter jet entered service with the Russian Air Force in February 2014, and it's essentially an upgraded version of the Su-27 flanker design, which was a classic fighter plane. This move marked the beginning of what's known as the 4 generation of combat jets. Just like its predecessor, the Su-27 was designed to take on the American F-15C Eagle and dominate the skies over Europe. The Su-35's primary role is to be a top-notch performer in air-to-air -air combat situations. The aircraft indeed has incredible maneuverability for fancy aerial moves, impressive speed, long-range capabilities, and advanced tech that makes it a tactical powerhouse, and it's making its presence felt in the Ukraine conflict. Ukrainian pilots are having a tough time countering it, highlighting the Su-35's prowess in air-to-air -air combat. But this is also the reason the U.S. is letting Ukraine have the F-16, so they can even out and even beat Russia in their struggle for air superiority. While the Su-35 has sneaky sensors that can spot enemy jets without getting caught and long-range missiles that can hit targets from over 60 miles away, the F-16 jets come loaded with advanced medium-range missiles, like the AIM-120 from the U.S. As earlier mentioned, the only challenge will be in training Ukrainian pilots to use the jet, because even experienced pilots need time to learn the ropes, from how the jet handles to how to use it in a fight.
The coalition is now in action as the prime ministers, Rishi Sunak of the UK and Mark Rutte of the Netherlands, got the ball rolling on May 16th. Not long after, the US joined in, announcing its participation in training Ukrainian pilots to handle F-16 fighter jets. Denmark has also taken action initiating training for eight Ukrainian pilots to operate these jets. The pilots arrived at a Danish airbase, accompanied by 65 personnel learning maintenance and servicing. Greece is also participating in the training. Even with all this training, Ukraine's Air Force spokesperson warns that becoming proficient with the F-16S won't happen by this winter. Pilot training might take around six months, as opposed to the earlier four months suggestion, while the timeline for engineers and mechanics is still uncertain. The aim is for Ukrainian pilots and crew to be combat ready with F-16S by early next year, as discussed by NATO leaders in July. Fortunately, the aircraft has long been on Ukraine's radar due to its potent capabilities and global accessibility. Armed with a 20mm cannon and the capacity to carry an array of weaponry, F-16S are attractive assets to them. Another advantage of the fighter is its commonality among NATO allies, making spare parts more accessible compared to Ukraine's current Russian aircraft. The goal is to work together with European allies on the best way to provide these planes to Ukraine. And it also seems the U.S. had a secret agreement with China to keep Russia in check. The exact count of the F-16S going to Ukraine is still unknown, though. But considering there are over 4,600 of these jets flying with 26 different air forces globally, availability isn't an issue. Denmark is, however, set to deliver a total of 19 jets to the country. Six of the jets are expected by year-end, followed by eight in 2024 and five in 2025. Meanwhile, the Netherlands, with its 42 F-16S, is still deciding how many it'll contribute. Other countries are also part of the effort. Portugal, Romania, and Belgium also possess F-16S, like those provided by Denmark and the Netherlands, offering a consistent training platform for Ukrainian pilots. At the beginning of the war, Moscow had almost 1,200 planes, according to the people at the ISS think tank. Meanwhile, Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine had a way smaller stash, around 120 old Soviet-era aircraft. This is the major reason it's tricky for Ukraine to keep its air force ready to go. When you're in a fight, you want as many planes as possible up and running. But because the country has limited jets, they've been focusing on their air defenses instead. Also, the Ukrainian missiles don't have as much range as the ones on Russian planes right now, making it an uneven battlefield. Now that Ukraine is getting so much support, Russia's apprehensions are evident, cautioning that supplying jets to Ukraine could escalate the conflict. Norway is contemplating a similar move, though specifics are pending. And that's not all. Ukraine is exploring the possibility of obtaining Swedish-made Gripen jets too, engaging in discussions with Sweden. Sweden has permitted the country's pilots to test its Gripen fighter, while also acknowledging the need to safeguard its own airspace. Furthermore, Poland and Slovakia have bolstered Ukraine's combat aircraft collection by contributing 27 MiG-29S collaboration among these nations underscores the commitment to fortifying Ukraine's aerial capabilities. While the Saab JS-39 Gripen, the Swedish fighter jet, is not as globally renowned as its American counterpart, it holds its own when it comes to capabilities and would have been a great addition to the Ukrainian armament. Developed by Saab, a Swedish aerospace and defense company, the Gripen is a light, single-engine, multi-role combat aircraft that's found a niche in the Swedish Air Force. It sports a distinct delta wing and also features a canard configuration with a negative stability design. An interesting switch was made to a fly-by-wire flight system, replacing traditional manual controls with an electronic interface. By 2020, over 200 Gripen aircraft of varying models had been produced. The Gripen story began when Sweden realized it needed new fighters to replace aging models like the Saab 35 Draken and Saab 37 Viggen in the late 1970s. They were aiming for a cheaper, faster option with good short field performance considering a defensive dispersed basing plan. While the Saab 38 was suggested for attack and training, the A20A modification of the Viggen was proposed for various other roles. It wasn't until 1987 that the Gripen was rolled out, though, commemorating Saab's 50th anniversary. However, its first flight was delayed by 18 months due to issues with the flight control system. 
concerns with avionics, particularly the fly-by-wire flight control system and relaxed stability design, emerged during testing. An unfortunate crash during a landing in 1989 also prompted Saab and U.S. firm CalSpan to introduce software modifications. In 1995, a partnership between Saab military aircraft and British Aerospace was formed to adapt, produce, market, and support Gripen internationally. Just like Sweden planned, this aircraft stands out for its compact size and cost efficiency. While it's tricky to calculate exact costs, the Gripen reportedly had a flyaway cost of less than $60 million. It's known for having a relatively low operational cost among modern fighter jets. In terms of performance, it can take off at a maximum weight and accelerate up to Mach 2. Notably, it has a super cruise ability and a range of around 1,500 kilometers. Its firepower is impressive too, as it is the first fighter to carry the lethal Meteor air-to-air -air missile with a range of up to 80 miles. Speaking of its reputation, the Gripen is recognized for its user-friendly displays and straightforward interface, making it easier for pilots to fly. Additionally, it's equipped with electronic warfare pods that enhance its onboard jamming capabilities. This makes it effective for the suppression or destruction of enemy air defense during missions. Now it has found international homes in countries like Hungary, the Czech Republic, Thailand, Brazil, and South Africa. Unfortunately, Sweden may not be able to deploy some of these fighters to Ukraine despite its capabilities, but the MiG-29S contributed will also help them to a good extent. Indeed, Ukraine has always had this fighter jet in supply, but the additional ones provided by Poland and Slovakia would add to the dwindling number of aircraft in the country's armament. The Mikoyan MiG-29, affectionately known as the Fulcrum, was made by the Mikoyan Design Bureau in the Soviet Union on October 6, 1977. The aircraft's maiden flight occurred on that day, with production kicking off in 1981. Just two years later, it officially entered service and more than 1,600 MiG-29S have been produced since then. This fighter has proven to be a gem in the Russian Air Force's arsenal. Its abilities span a broad spectrum, from air-to-air -air combat to ground attacks and reconnaissance missions. This adaptability also led to the creation of variants like the MiG-29M, MiG-29K, and MiG-35. The goal of creating a nimble and agile aircraft that could outmaneuver its opponents in aerial combat was realized in the fighter through a swept wing configuration that facilitates high maneuverability at both high and low speeds. Additionally, the MiG-29 is powered by the Klimov RD-33 turbofan engines, giving it remarkable speed and thrust. The MiG-29 isn't a big aircraft, but its compact size has an advantage. This is the secret weapon that makes it achieve high maneuverability, tipping the scales at around 24,030 pounds when empty. With its twin RD-33 engines, it can reach speeds of up to 1,518 miles per hour, which is no small feat. It can also operate at high altitudes, thanks to its service ceiling of 10.56 miles. Plus, it can travel considerable distances without refueling, making it a true workhorse. Concerning firepower, the MiG-29 has a 30mm GS-830 cannon capable of firing up to 1,500 rounds per minute. This cannon, nestled in the nose, is accurate and effective for air-to-air -air and ground attacks. The MiG-29 also wields air-to-air -air missiles that can engage enemy aircraft from a distance. It's equipped to carry up to two medium-range R-27R or R-27T missiles and up to four short-range R-60 or R-73 missiles for close combat scenarios. Unfortunately, these ranges are nothing compared to Russia's major fighter, the Su-35, as already mentioned. Also, MiG-29S were made in Russia, so there is nothing about its abilities that would shock Russian soldiers, unlike the F-16S that they haven't handled before. They are worried about this intervention, and Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, recently weighed in on the issue of the U.S.-built F-16 fighter jets and their potential to carry nuclear weapons. Speaking at a military base in Dushanbe, Tajikistan, he highlighted that certain versions of the F-16 are capable of carrying nuclear weapons and should not be deployed to Ukraine. However, when asked about this aspect, White House spokesperson John Kirby chose not to delve into the nuclear capabilities of the F-16 fighters. Instead, 
He emphasized President Joe Biden's consistent stance against seeing the conflict escalate, especially into the realm of nuclear confrontation. Kirby also suggested that if Russia is genuinely concerned about Ukraine's military capabilities, it should consider withdrawing its troops from the country's territory. Also, the U.S. is only providing training for Ukrainian pilots and has not concluded to send in its own F-16 jets to Ukraine. This decision was only made by Denmark and other countries already stated. Once Ukraine begins to use these fighter jets, though, Russia's invasion plans would be bound for defeat. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, check out the link on your screen to watch another interesting video. See you there.